Wouldn't it be nice to have several thought leaders in your industry know and love your brand? Start a podcast. Invite your industry's thought leaders to be guests on your show. And start reaping the benefits of having a network full of industry influencers. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. You're listening to B2B Growth, a daily podcast for B2B leaders. We've interviewed names you've probably heard before, like Gary Vaynerchuk and Simon Sinek, but you've probably never heard from the majority of our guests. That's because the bulk of our interviews aren't with professional speakers and authors. Most of our guests are in the trenches leading sales and marketing teams. They're implementing strategy. They're experimenting with tactics. They're building the fastest growing B2B companies in the world. My name is James Carberry. I'm the founder of Sweetfish Media, a podcast agency for B2B brands, and I'm also one of the co-hosts of this show. When we're not interviewing sales and marketing leaders, you'll hear stories from behind the scenes of our own business. We'll share the ups and downs of our journey as we attempt to take over the world. Just kidding. Well, maybe. Let's get into the show. Welcome back to the B2B Growth Show. We're here today with Karen Kang, CEO at Platter. Karen, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you, Logan. That is great to hear. We are really excited to have you on the show today, Karen. Interested to talk about this concept of content marketing no longer being an option when you are a content agency yourself. Really intrigued as we were going back and forth over email talking about this idea. But before we jump into that and you unpack some of this, these things in the changing landscape that you guys have been seeing, Karen, why don't you take a second to share with us what you and the team at Platter are up to these days? Absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, so we've been in business for the last seven years. For the, primarily those seven years, we're really invested in creating our own internal media properties. We didn't mm-hmm. start seven years ago ever thinking that we would ever open up an agency arm, and yet here we are. And we've been creating, you know, giant, you know, multi-million um, audiences that that have in, in all kinds of various niche um, in, mm-hmm. in interests, including survival prepper space the DIY home improvement space, and even um, makeup tutorials is one of our internal Mm -hmm. properties as well. So we've created about 150 of these internal properties, seven of which have have gone on to hit the millions and hit it really big that we're focusing on. Mm -hmm. Um, But what we've done and kind of stumbled into was create this system that we were able to replicate across any industry Mm -hmm. that is to drive traffic, to be friends with Google, to do complete white hat tricks so that you're creating a sustainable source of organic lead generation and of course traffic acquisition. So kind of stumbled into that by accident Mm -hmm. and realized that we're really, really good at it. And Mm -hmm. that's when people started asking us to create what we've done for ourselves, for them, for their businesses, Mm -hmm. Uh, because it is a lot of work, right? It takes a lot of time and resource and of course a lot of money. So uh, we, for the longest time, had to say no, because we, Frank, quite frankly, did not have the infrastructure to do a a really good job. Mm -hmm. Um, And it wasn't until a year and a half ago where we we were ready to make that jump and start offering this as a service. Mm -hmm. Um, And since then, it's been incredible growth. Uh, We have just under 40 clients now uh, Mm -hmm. producing all their content, managing their entire social and video um, as well as our organic lead generation and um, any sort of lead campaigns that they're doing on the mm-hmm. organic side on social media networks. So that's where mm-hmm. we are today. Yeah. And I, I've been hearing uh, a lot on this topic of how are you managing this changing landscape of of balancing your organic reach with your uh, paid acquisition uh, as things are changing. You know, Dave Gearhart and Joe Chernoff were talking about this on Seeking Wisdom, um, or not Seeking Wisdom, Coffee with the CMO, you know, about how things have changed since, you know, HubSpot first started their blog and just started putting out masses of content of content. And it's not that simple anymore. The The landscape has definitely changed. And one of the triggers you and I were talking about before we jumped onto this uh, episode, Karen, was, you know, Facebook's algorithm change. Tell us a little bit about how you guys saw that play out um, from your perspective a little bit. Absolutely. And, and you know, you kind of hit the nail on the head um, earlier saying that it, you just don't, you don't have another option but content marketing, right? And I'll get into that mm-hmm. in a second. But 
yeah. specifically your Facebook question, there was a big algorithm shift that happened in, in January of this year. Um, and so the things that we were doing for our clients last year just simply did not work anymore. It became mm-hmm. completely pay to play. Right. This mm-hmm. is what the nature of this is the world we live in now in advertising. And um, even for the paying players, the ones that spend, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars a day on their campaigns today are finding mm-hmm. it unsustainable. It's becoming mm-hmm. more expensive and it's becoming more uh, rigid. Um, it's it's definitely getting a lot of regulation. Um, and of course, all the data that we used to have as advertisers, it's had, it has been dwindled down um, a little bit and we see that happening more and more. Um, and so it's just a different playing field, right? This is mm-hmm. The more money that you're going to throw at it, that's the, those are the ads that are going to be served. And um, mm-hmm. unfortunately, that, that is the case. It's not a sustainable strategy on its own anymore. Um, right. So here we are. You know, we've been, we've been producing um, content specifically to drive organic traffic means it's not free traffic, but we're not paying for it, right? It's not mm-hmm. free because we have, a t- we have a giant content right. team making the that content. work that goes into it, right? Yeah. Exactly. There's a lot of work going into that. Um, but we're not paying for that traffic on top of our co- operating costs to produce that really good content. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and so when you're pairing a strategy like your paid PPC campaigns, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on AdWords, um, you kind of spike that growth with the PPC. But then mm-hmm. when we, our strategy has been to quote unquote, exit them through the gift shop, so to speak. And that means to Mm -hmm. exit them into if they're coming in from one particular article, or they're coming in from one type of lead magnet that you're that you're promoting as a as your paid campaign, then Mm -hmm. the next thing that we show them after they do the action based upon your call to action is very much congruent to where they came in from. Exiting them through the gift shop, giving them and and continuously giving them more value in the form of content. Mm Yeah. And so you mentioned some of the stringent nature of, you know, the pay to play world um, that's going on right now. Mm -hmm. What are some of the specific pitfalls that that you've seen, you know, in companies or agencies that are trying to drive pure paid traffic? So the problem with only driving paid traffic, if you don't have any organic means, is Mm -hmm. as soon as you stop spending that traffic mm-hmm. is essentially falling off a cliff, right? Yep. And we've seen this time and time again, that's not going to change because if you stop spending money, you're not going to get any any more eyeballs onto your ads, mm-hmm. right? So right. Um, that in and of itself, it tells you that it's not something that can be sustained, especially with rising advertising costs. Right. So that's probably the biggest reason why people mm-hmm. have been reaching out to us for to drive organic traffic and really just to learn how we do it because we teach mm-hmm. it too. We don't just yep. do it for you as an agency service, we have a course on that as well. So this is all part of just, just man, the landscape has changed and here's how, what you need to do in order to compete. And um, like I said, like you said earlier, it's not an option. Right. So what are the things, Karen, that you guys are doing to help your clients acquire organic leads? You know, you mentioned you're teaching some, some courses on this. Um, you guys are helping people with this changing landscape. What are some of the things you guys are teaching folks? You know, I think a lot of our uh, audience here, B2B marketers, would love to hear some of the the topics you guys are covering um, that you're helping your clients with. Absolutely. And I think the biggest, the biggest uh, kind of aha moments that I get from, from some students and some fellow clients is that, is that um, when we talk about the way that we are mobile first, everyone throws out mobile first, right? Mm-hmm. But in actual development, for some odd reason, for most companies, they always start desktop first. But it's designed mm-hmm. for the for a computer screen, not a laptop, or I'm sorry, not for a phone. Because mm-hmm. if they are truly designing things for a mobile experience, which we all know as industry experts, that's where the, the mm-hmm. internet is going, right? If you don't have mm-hmm. most of your traffic coming in from mobile today, you'll see that very soon. But the thing is, mobile doesn't care about website design. Mobile doesn't care about, you know, how good your video is loading because it's going to load in the way that the device allows it to load. Mm -hmm. And mobile is all about a one, as soon as it goes onto a mobile phone, it's going to be one column. And you want to make sure that you got your real estate above the fold is Mm -hmm. the most compelling real estate that you should Mm -hmm. be trying to get the action from. So if you're not designing 
your pages, your content, your whatever, your ads to be mobile friendly, to be um, completely optimized for that above the fold mobile screen, Mm -hmm. you are going to lose so much opportunity and you're leaving Mm -hmm. so much money on the table and you don't know if you're split to us. You you don't actually know if if a campaign is a fail because Mm -hmm. it just never really got a chance to thrive. So I always tell um, everyone coming in, you know, we, you have to be thinking mobile first. So Mm -hmm. when I see things, big mistakes like buttons below the fold, or the call to action, you can't even see it until it's below the fold, or mm-hmm. the logo is below the fold. Th- mm-hmm. Those are, are basic things. So always be thinking above the fold and, of course, mobile. It's story time, and this growth story is about search engine marketing. Okay, so the story revolves around eSub, a project management SaaS company specifically for subcontractors. Even though eSub had incredible customer attention, they struggled with growth. Being a niche service, they discovered that there was little demand expressed for their solutions within search engines. To take on this challenge, eSub hired Directive Consulting, the B2B search marketing agency. After refining targeting, pre-qualifying clicks with an ad copy, and developing custom landing pages, Directive was able to increase eSub's marketing qualified leads by 71% while decreasing their cost per lead by 65%. I have a hunch that Directive can get these kind of results for you too. So head over to directiveconsulting.com and request a totally free custom proposal. That's directiveconsulting.com. All right, let's get back to this interview. The other thing we were talking about, Karen, is you know the strategy that you have helped clients uh, employ in marrying their content marketing and their paid traffic strategy. You know, you mentioned this concept of of walking them through the gift shop. You know, after that call to action, um, what are some of the other things that you guys have done to help people? You know, effectively um, marry their their content strategy and their paid strategy together. Oh, what a great question. Uh, so we do this for our internal brands all the time. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of our clients that do a lot of direct response marketing, we we also follow a very similar strategy. Um, so content is about, you know, building the hype. It's about mm-hmm. building communities. It's about building tribes, right? That That's the power that content provides. And so if you've got, let's say, a campaign coming up in a month, and let's say that campaign is for, I don't know, an e-commerce product for uh, a knife because we sell mm-hmm. a lot of knives at survival life. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. So for the first two weeks before that, com- that campaign is going live, guess what our audience is going to see exclusively over mm-hmm. and over and over again. We're going to show them mm-hmm. knives. We're going to show them how to sharpen knives using, using nothing but a, a bag of Doritos. We're going to show mm-hmm. them, you know, all the knife laws by state. <laughs> and by the time we've, we've completely warmed them up, primed them up, Mm-hmm. And on that Friday, when we launched that knife campaign, it's they've seen nothing but knives, 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 knives. Boom. Mm-hmm. Here is the coolest knife on the freaking planet right mm-hmm. here. This is yeah. what you need right now. Um, yeah. Content builds hype and it builds mm-hmm. up that, that, that tribe around, the, uh, around a specific interest. And so that's what we've been able to accomplish. Mm-hmm. And some of the things that we do to marry a content strategy um, that does drive organic traffic into a, um, something that turns into a paid campaign. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So using using the content to to prep your audience for the paid advertising that's coming. You know, I think that that timing is pretty crucial because, you know, you you flip those and and it doesn't have the same effect. Right. That timing is is very crucial to to using those two strategies together. And right. you know, the other thing we, we talked about uh, beforehand, Karen, was, you know, if you're using these sorts of strategies to to effectively use content marketing at the same time as your paid advertising, you end up owning an audience. Tell us a little bit about, you know, some of the ways that you've seen your clients be able to to effectively get to that point. Absolutely. So while we're, we're you know, building up these PPC campaigns. We also, of course, build up their organic traffic in general. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, we every single one of our, our sites has a pixel attached to it, both mm-hmm. on Facebook and AdWords. And so that alone, you know, you've got your pixeled audience that you're then able to buy more effective traffic to, whether it's in the form of a retargeting ad or a lookalike audience, mm-hmm. right? Those are the audiences that, you, that are created. But on Aside from the social networks, right? Just talking about your own property, your website, your 
www.mycompany.com. Mm -hmm. um, that is your audience. And unless you don't pay for your GoDaddy bill one day and your whole website goes down, nobody mm -hmm. can kind of shut that down or take that away from you. Unless, of course, you start doing a bunch of black hat SEO tricks and then Google doesn't like you anymore, right? But mm -hmm. why do that? Let's not do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but, so definitely, it's 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 not something that, that you can get shut down for. Like I have a lot of clients that are that are, are great. You know, they, they use Amazon as a channel and that's their number one form of commerce. But, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, I don't know if I'm talking to any Amazon uh, vendors here today, but, but it's so common to hear about how Amazon will just shut you down. Mm -hmm. And with arbitrarily, they won't mm -hmm. really, and, and getting your account back has always been a pain, right? So yeah. it's one of those things where do you want to put all of your eggs in someone else's basket? Mm -hmm. Our, no. and our answer to that was very, a, a big resounding no. And right. so our decision to go into content for that, that sole reason is strong enough and worth the investment that we've put in for the last seven years. Right. Right. And, you know, I think you make a really good point in, you know, You've got to take these this two pronged approach of you know content and your pay to play efforts because you can't just rely on content like like you did in years past. But if you're paying to play, uh, there's always going to be this opportunity that the faucet gets shut off. So keeping your efforts double down in in both places, um, I think, is a, a topic that's top of mind for a lot of marketers out there. Um, if folks want to stay connected with you, Karen, learn more about some of the strategies that you guys have employed to effectively, you know, marry these two marketing efforts together. What's the best way for them to connect with you, follow you, um, reach out to you? Awesome. So yeah, our website is www.platter and it's spelled P-L-A-T-T-R.com. And my mm -hmm. email address, you can re write to me directly. I'm a big uh, content marketing and social media nerd. I love talking about it. So <laughs> write to me. I want to hear about it. Uh, my email address is Karen and it's spelled again, a little weird. Like, this is a reoccurring <laughs> theme with us. Um, and my name is spelled K-E-R-E-N at platter.com. And that's spelled P-L-A-T-T-R.com. One more time. Awesome. Well, Karen, this has been a great chat. Love hearing your thoughts on how folks can effectively um, work on both sides of the house as they're um, uh, approaching their marketing efforts. For all of our folks out there interested in everything account-based marketing, we have uh, yet again this year, our friends over at Flip My Funnel putting on a great conference. Um, it is not too far away. August 8th in Boston. Um, and for our B2B growth listeners, we want to make sure if you haven't been catching it over the last week or two, uh, we have a promo code for you guys to use to get 50% off your tickets to the Flip My Funnel conference. Um, again, August 8th in Boston. If you go to flipmyfunnel.com, the 2018 conference link, when you go to get your tickets, use the promo code B2B growth. That's just like our show name, the letter B, the number two, the letter B, growth. Uh, no hyphens, no spaces. Just put that in, in the promo code field and make sure you get 50% off. We're looking forward to connecting with a lot of our prior guests and a lot of our audience there um, talking everything account-based marketing um, and everything B2B sales and marketing at the Flip My Funnel conference. So go get those tickets, use that promo code and see you in Boston. There are lots of ways to build a community. And we've chosen to build the B2B growth community through this podcast. But because of the way podcasts work, it's really hard to engage with our listeners. And without engagement, it's tough to build a great community. So here's what we've decided to do. We're organizing small dinners across the country with our listeners and guests. No sales pitches, no agenda, just great conversations with like-minded people. We'll talk business, we'll talk family, we'll talk goals and dreams, we'll build friendships. So if you'd like to be a part of a B2B Growth Dinner in a city near you, go to b2bgrowthdinners.com. That's b2bgrowthdinners.com. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.